It has been just over a week since Apple wrapped up WWDC. This is the annual developer conference, which was held in San Jose, California, where the company showcased the latest and greatest in software capabilities coming to all the operating systems this fall. Now, Apple surprised us this year when it announced big changes for the iPad, which includes splitting iOS into iPadOS, which will solely focus on the iPad. That in addition to iPadOS getting several new features that further distinguish the iPad user experience from its older sibling, iPhone. Now, each of these new features are designed to challenge the existing paradigm in which we view the iPad primarily as a media consumption device instead of a feature-rich computer. Now, if you are anything like me, you are chomping at the proverbial bit to figure out if these new features coming to iOS 13 and iPadOS are enough to propel the iPad into the driver's seat and become the PC replacement that we've always kind of romanticized it to be. And that is exactly what we are talking about in today's video. I have been living with iOS for over a week now to gauge whether or not the iPad could be transformed into a full feature computer for the masses. I am Mike and this is Tech 24 7 DV. Thumbs if you like this type of content, sub if you want to see more iPad and iPhone related videos. Now let's get started. I put timestamps in the video description below in the event that you want to come back to a certain section of the video and make sure you are subscribed to Tech 24 7 TV with notifications enabled to be one of the first to watch my complete review of iOS 13 when it ships in the fall. It was almost in lockstep with Steve Jobs announcing the first generation iPad that I bought into the idea that this device would eventually outgrow it being primarily used for consuming content. And it would eventually mature into being a tool that could be used depending on the nature of work that needs to be accomplished. Now you probably don't have one type of screwdriver for every type of screw that you're going to encounter in your life, right? There are different tools for different jobs. Since Apple diversified the iPad lineup with the iPad Pro, the company's been blurring the line between the capabilities of the iPad with the type of jobs that a traditional computer could perform. As quoted from Phil Schiller talking to Stephen Levy, the job of the iPad should be to be so powerful and capable that you never need a notebook. Like, why do I even need a notebook? I can add a keyboard and I can do all of these things. It's that last line which really sticks out for me. I can do all of these things. Now, the reason why it sticks out, because if you were to ask most people, they would retort Phil saying that their workflow is getting increasingly more complex, while by and large, the capabilities of the iPad have not really evolved at a fast enough pace. That is until this year. For iOS 13 and iPadOS, Apple is cranking the iPad way past 11 and is addressing a majority of the complaints that consumed YouTube, tech blogs, over the past 18 months when the newest version of the iPad Pro, iPad Air, and the iPad Mini 5 were launched. First, Apple is taking the horse binders off of Safari now to deliver an almost like-for-like -like user experience when it comes to browsing the web. It won't matter if you're using Safari to check your Gmail, if you're automating your workflows with Zapper, or if you're uploading files to Dropbox. The changes coming to Safari in iOS 11 put the desktop class in desktop class browsing, which will allow you to use the web as the way it was intended. Additionally, search results can now be selected without needing to use your finger, the Apple Pencil, by using the directional keys. And to boot, there is a download manager which can be configured to store downloads in the iCloud drive or even external storage. And to that point, Apple's embracing that the 1990s actually happened by bringing the ability to connect external storage to the iPad, in addition to being able to read, write, and manage files from the device. And in that same breath, the ability to connect external storage to the iPad will also usher in the ability for apps to import and export files directly. Meaning that LumaFusion should be able to import audio and video files that you have stored on your SD card while you're working in the field. Or if you want to be extra flexible, you can go ahead and connect a flash drive while working on an external monitor while you're sitting at your desk. Now, I have my fingers crossed that Apple will enable ProRes file support because my iPad can see the files right now. It just doesn't know what to do with them yet. Now, let me know if you're looking forward to ProRes support or maybe even another certain file type in the comments below. Thankfully, Apple's engineers designed the experience so that the Files app will not automatically open when the iPad is connected to external storage. And unlike Mac OS, the external storage device is not identified as a mounted drive, meaning you no longer have to safely eject storage when removing it. I mean, that's just amazing. How do we not do that before? 
Additionally, all this functionality works on the iPhone and in the iPod Touch, in addition to the iPad Pro, meaning if you can upgrade it, you can connect external storage to it. Along those same lines, there are several improvements to the Files app to enable better file management that really kind of go hand in hand with access to external storage and files. The first improvement coming to the Files app is the ability to organize data from the Files app in a column view. If you're familiar with macOS, this is the same view from Finder and it looks great on the large display of the iPad. This is gonna allow you to drill down and reveal file level information, including file type, file size, creation date, and tags. And better yet, if you work with other types of file formats that are rich in metadata, like an image file, you can see all the EXIF data that is written to the file from the camera. And equally nice, this view affords you the visibility to perform light editing controls in the way of rotating and trimming video right from the window. Now, unfortunately, the column view is not something that's gonna be available on the iPhone, or at least it's not something that's working in the first beta. Along those same lines, the improvements to file management and the ability to connect external storage allows users to import and export files directly into apps that support it. The second improvement coming to iOS 13 are improvements to search in the Files app. Users will soon have the ability to add search criteria to get more refined search results. And for example, let's say you wanna search your iPad or iCloud drive for an image that you saved, but you don't quite remember the name of it. Well, the first way you can search is by limiting the locations that you search in, say the recent files, or more broadly in your iCloud drive. Then if desired, you can add a search token the same way that you can in macOS to look for all files that are .jpeg or maybe even camera raw as a way of filtering down even further. And there are many different types of search tokens supported in the first beta, which means it's quite feasible that in the not so distant future that your iPad will index all the content which is stored in iCloud and that you will be able to search for nearly anything online or offline. Between this feature and the ability to share folders from iCloud Drive, I can nearly see the end of my relationship with Dropbox on the horizon. Now, let me know in the comments below if you are like me and you wanna end that relationship with Dropbox or Google Drive. The third improvement coming to iOS 13 is contextual menus. Now, when I first heard that Apple was removing 3D Touch on the 2019 iPhones, I nearly lost my shit because I use this feature all the time. My perspective is that 3D Touch is kind of like a wormhole into app shortcuts to quickly look at relevant information. Contextual shortcuts can reveal additional functionality related to the content on the display of the device. If you are familiar with how Peak and Pop worked on the iPhone, it's similar but different. Peak and Pop are exclusively available on devices that are 3D Touch capable. Where contextual menus are available on all devices that are running iOS 13 and later, it's better from an end user perspective because you're immediately presented with the option opposed to being required to swipe up with Peak and Pop. One by one, Apple is knocking down the list of complaints that consumers have for the iPad before it will be considered a laptop replacement while simultaneously building up a robust operating system that allows developers to create a next generation of apps that will blaze the path forward. Now, which plays right into Phil's quote that I talked about in the beginning that I can do all of these things. Given what we learned since Apple's keynote and the first beta, I believe that there is really good reason to be excited and optimistic about the future of iPad. I believe that iOS 13 will not only change the type of work that you can perform on your iPad, but additionally, it will change the fundamental nature of how you work on your iPad. Meaning, at the end of the day, when you pick up your iPad, it's really gonna make you contemplate. What's a computer? Hey everyone, thank you very much for watching my video and I hope you enjoyed my perspective on the future of iPad computing. For most people, I believe that the iPad and iPad Pro will become the default computing experience because Apple's really doubling down on the user experience and the capabilities of the platform. Whether you're excited about the future or you don't see that happening anytime soon, I would love to hear your reasons in the comments below. Hit like, hit subscribe. I am Mike and this is Tech247 TV. You can follow me at Caputo on Twitter and Instagram where I post regularly and I will talk to you in the next one.